In part one, we talked a lot about lists. We now understand that they're pretty straightforward. Libraries are pretty easy too, because libraries are just special kinds of lists. They also have one or more columns. They also have one or more views with one default view. In this regard, they are exactly the same. The difference then is just a few. Primarily, lists are data, meaning they are just data, just columns, just like a spreadsheet where you might have any variety of first names, last names, email addresses, office locations for a contact list. Libraries, on the other hand, do have columns associated with them. But for library items, you must have a file, a physical file like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, PDFs, JPEGs, GIFs, movies, and so forth. You must have a file associated with those items. Lists can have attachments if the administrator allows it. But library items must have an associated file. That is the core difference between lists and libraries. For a library, the columns or the metadata describe the files, who the author is, what date was it created or modified, what's the actual file size or the playtime. But for libraries, the file is the most important, whereas lists only rely on the metadata or the columns themselves. The good news is everything you learn about lists in this chapter applies to libraries as well. The features that are different or that are specific for libraries are going to be covered in their own chapter, and that's exactly why I organize it that way. Everything that you learn now applies to everything. The specifics for libraries will come a little bit later. So we know that we're going to have data in lists and libraries, but how do we monitor what's going on with those lists and libraries without having to go into every single list and library, which could be a very cumbersome and time-consuming process? Well, the answer is RSS feeds and alerts. These two things help us keep track of activities in SharePoint because keeping track of them on our own could be overwhelming just because everything can be in so many different places. These all notify us of changes. They again, kind of like lists and libraries, are similar yet different. Both of them include only a simple subject and link to the actual item. It doesn't give us the entire detail when it notifies us. Both can be delivered via text messaging if that's configured for your version of SharePoint, or they can be delivered via email. The differences then are that RSS feeds apply to an entire list. And you can't configure an RSS feed. It's either subscribed or not, basically on or off. Alerts, on the other hand, can be configured. We have all kinds of choices that we can make with those. For alerts, there are a variety of additions, deletions, modifications, and properties that can be set to trigger an alert. With an RSS feed, it's just a change that triggers it in general. In addition, alerts can be set for an entire list or library or just for an individual item that you're interested in and not the entire list or library. We'll see what all of these different options are when we actually create an alert in another video. The last thing we need to talk about is the SharePoint Recycle Bin. And I know many of you may be saying exactly why do we need to talk about the Recycle Bin? Well, SharePoint does have a Recycle Bin and it's just like the one in Windows. When you delete items in SharePoint, no matter what the item is, they go to the site recycle bin. So far, this is pretty much exactly like we'd expect. Also, items can be returned to their original list or library from the recycle bin. So if you accidentally delete something, you can kind of go pull it out of the trash, wipe the jelly stains off of it, and put it back where you need to use it. This takes away some of the fear of working within SharePoint. Here's where things are a little bit different than the Windows recycle bin. For the SharePoint Site Recycle Bin, the default is for items to stay in the recycle bin for 30 days. If the recycle bin isn't emptied, in other words, if you don't dump the trash, or if they're not recovered, items that are in the recycle bin for 30 days will automatically be deleted from the recycle bin and from SharePoint after 30 days. You should check your specific recycle bin policies because 30 days is the default. That can be customized by your SharePoint administrator and I don't want to give you bad information. I found that most organizations don't necessarily change this, but check to make sure how long things will stay in your recycle bin. What you now know is that lists are the core of data in SharePoint. Lists are composed of at least one column and at least one view. Views can display specific columns while hiding others, as well as sort, filter, group, and total list items. Libraries share all of these features with lists, they are no different. Well, that's not quite true. The main difference is that while a list item can have an attachment, the attachment is not required. 
A list only requires the data, the columns of information, while library items require an associated file. For library items, the file is the most important part of the entry. We know that we can get some help, that RSS feeds and alerts notify us via email or text when content is changed in SharePoint. Again, they're similar yet different. Alerts are configurable and more flexible than RSS feeds. And lastly, we also now know that SharePoint has its own recycle bin that works 99% exactly the same way as the one we're used to in Windows. Items are temporarily placed there when they're deleted and they can be recovered if necessary. But unlike the Windows Recycle Bin, the SharePoint Recycle Bin does have a time limit. And if things sit there too long, SharePoint will automatically clean them out. 